Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 813, we're going to talk about Egon, God of Death. Now, I know this card has a backside to it, and but I built the deck focused around the actual creature here. The artifact on the back is not going to win with commander damage. That's for sure. So, for three mana, we had a 6-6 six, six death touch. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Well, it's black, so you know there's a catch. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile two cards from your graveyard. If you can't, sacrifice Egon and draw a card. That's not bad as far as drawbacks go. Now, granted, we're not going to swamp Dark Ritual this thing out on turn one and expect it to stay around. Uh, our deck is very, very susceptible to bajukabog hits and things like that, but... Eh, on the whole, having cards in your graveyard, mm, the color black is pretty good about getting that done. Now, let's get into it. Uh, first off, uh, the first cards that I had thought about were, you know, it says at the beginning of your upkeep you exile two cards. Well, Tormod, when cards leaving your graveyard now cause things to happen like you get two two zombies every time a card leaves your yard the desecrated tomb says you get a one one flyer every time uh, creature cards leave your graveyard so not bad not bad at all our mana of course the aforementioned dark ritual soul ring I'm running Jeweled Amulet because it's because it makes me smile for no other reason. Every other turn, it's a mana rock. I know it's not great, but it's not terrible either. Sacking creatures to get four black mana, also not bad. Um, this allows you to you know sacrifice your lead mirror, you know tap it and sack it and you know play something you're probably not supposed to that early. Uh, Milliken. You know, to mill a card to get the colorless mana. This accomplishes both goals that we're trying to do. Our millery sphere puts the lands in the hand, but the sphere itself goes to the yard. You know, to burnish hard, they go into play, and the heart goes to the yard. So that's not bad at all. Now, our card draw, Village Rites, you know, sacking a creature to draw two cards. Sign in Blood, Knight's Whisper. Siphon Mine Funeral Rites is perfect. You know, draw two, lose two, mill two. It's so we've drawn two cards and now we have three more cards in our graveyard. This is perfect for the deck. Read the bones and then our corpse auger because it's gonna die. We're gonna sacrifice it to something, right? Um, now Let's cover the weird category before we get into our creatures, shall we? Um, Final Parting is a beautiful tutor. It puts one into the hand and one into the yards. I mean, that's the two places we want cards with this deck. Uh, of course, there's Diabolic Tutor. Uh, the Boneyard Parlay, because things are going to die. That's for sure. Our Commander, it is a 6-6 six, six Death Touch, and... I guess the reason why they put Death Touch on 6-6s six is because any other ability might be overpowered, menace, whatever. Um, Swiftfoot Boots is there to protect our commander. Yawgmoth's Vile Offering. To get a creature back, kill a creature. Sanguimancy. Draw cards and lose life or pure devotion to black. That probably should have been with the card draw. But let's look at our creature shall we we'll start off with our uh what is this the aristocrat thingies i don't know uh, zulaport cutthroat vindictive vampire and sir conrad the grim so steadily about filling up that graveyard right uh, a stitcher supplier gonna do it pretty good job but viscera seer a good sack outlet scrap heap scrounger if it gets milled, it can come back. If it dies, it, I mean, it's just a good reusable creature. Priest of the Forgotten Gods. You can sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players. So you can have the rest of the table 
lose two, sack a creature, you get to and draw a card. So that's it's not a bad ROI on your, you know, sacking two creatures that you want to go to the graveyard anyway. Gifted Aetherborn, it's a good creature. I mean, to be alive, you're not sad if you have to sack it. Uh, the Vampire Hexmage, the Walker Killer. Magus of the Abyss, just going to keep eating up creatures, you know. Um, Hooded Blightfang, whenever a creature you control with Death Touch, our commander, attacks, each opponent loses one, you gain one. Yeah. Um, Squelching Leeches, playing Mono Black. Same with the Nightmare. Archetype really works with the Blightfang, doesn't it? You know, for Death Touch. Then we have our, uh, what I like to call the 187 creatures. The Necrotal. Bone Shredder. Now, I know Bone Shredder's not as good because it has Echo and you have to pay for it twice, but um, we'll get to that. The Fleshbag Marauder. Plague Crafter. Merciless Executioner. I like me some Vampire Nighthawk, i tell you that. Uh, Pawn of Ulamoth, or another non-token creature you control dies, you get another creature. So your creatures are, you know, one dies, it replaces itself with zero ones that you can still sacrifice. And yet your original card is in the graveyard for Egon to chew up. Uh, the Great Merchant of Asphodel, great card. Once it comes into play, I mean, it does its thing, you really don't mind sacrificing it. And then Ascendant Even Car. This thing really puts the lock on some, um, you know, small tokens. Now, I had thought about, I'm not done with creatures. Uh, I have uh, seven more, eight more here. Um,. But I want to look at them all through the lens of the Eon Hub. Players skip their upkeep steps. Now, if I get it, it's great. Uh, the Brain Spool is in there to go find it, you know, as a specifically Eon Hub tutor. Hey, it can find some other five drop stuff as well. But uh, all of these have an upkeep drawback. Even if we don't get the Eon Hub, are we really sad to sacrificing a creature every turn to a Lord of the Pit? Probably not. We probably have enough to feed it for a while. You know, for a 7-7 Flying Trample. I'll do that. Devouring Strauss. Same thing. Uh, except it's a 9-9 Flying Trample. Infernal Denizen you have to sacrifice two swamps there again at some points in the game that may not bother us it's two more cards into the graveyard right but um tap to steal a creature okay razor main mastichor we're discarding a card during the upkeep there again that feeds the graveyard if we have the hub we don't have to do it it's just um a big old mastichor Flow of Maggots cannot be blocked by non-wall creatures. Um, I just love the card. I mean, I, I, I do have a uh, unhealthy fascination with cards from Ice Age, I know. Uh, but that was the first set I ever went big with. Um, Mind Rack Demon. You know, it mills four for a four or five flying trample for four, so... Uh, does have delirium, so there again, it can solve the problem uh, with the four or more card types by itself. But Egan's going to chew some of those up. So we have Gallo Braid, five five trample for five with that, of course, king of upkeep, and then Aku Dijin. Now I like Aku. Uh, you don't see many five six tramplers for five mana, or at least you didn't in Visions. Uh, but that upkeep, each opponent's creatures get bigger. Um, how we did it back in the day is we most people didn't play the card. I just made a point for the opponents to have no creatures. But it's easier in 1v1 as it is to a table of four or five, seven people, you know. So 
actual removal spells, there's not a lot here because most of those creatures that you saw were removal spells in and of themselves. So we have Murder, Diabolic Edict, Doom Blade, Tragic Slip, and Perish. Green creatures don't have a problem tapping for mana. I don't have a problem killing all green creatures because none of the other colors have that advantage. So there, I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> now, I know what you're going to say. Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds doesn't make a lot of sense in a monocolor deck. It does. Yes, it has the drawback of the sw the eventual swamp comes into play tapped, but it does put another card in your graveyard for Egon to eat, which is the reason why the Grixis Panorama and the Jun Panorama are in there as well. Now, Dakmore Salvage with <laughs> Dredge is perfect. Uh, this thing is mm, it's beautiful. Um, polluted Mire. Uh, it's a two mana draw one card spell that ends up with it in the graveyard, essentially. Quicksand may not matter some of the time, but every now and then, it works. 50% of the time, it works every time. And then our Rogue's Passage, because let's face it, we do have a 6-6 six, six commander. And uh, that's four hits, but it will work. Uh have not played Egon yet. Just uh, just got it finished not too long ago, so it will probably see play on the next game night. Uh, but that is what. Oh, I'm all tilted and stuff. That is what we have got. Let's go put it on the wall, shall we? Eight thirteen is on the wall. As you know. Um, these, that entire row there is going to be the older decks uh, trying to honestly solve the block problem there uh, with the two different size deck boxes that I had since my supplier quit making the <laughs> the deck box that I've used for several, several hundred decks. So anyway, that's what we've got for today. I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. But well, we're going to go ahead and shuffle and cut.